Hi guys, here's another tutorial just on doing single player AI mostly. It might be useful for your multiplayer levels, but I think there's a better way of doing it. Well, I know from experience there is. Now, what I've got here is a very basic level. Obviously, this is just a brush that I've put down temporarily in additive. I've got light here just to light the scene so you can actually see what you're doing. Got a normal player start, so. You know that's in add actor, add player start, just add another one there. There's also a navigation node here, which is add actor and it's add path node. Now you normally use these to show the AI a good path through the level, but for the purpose of this example, um, because it works rather well, we're also going to have the AI spawn on this apple and come and attack you. So we've got that apple down. Uh what we need to do is go into Kismet. Now I've selected that sequence. I'm gonna create a new sequence just to keep it nice and tidy that is, because you might have lots of these and obviously you don't want to be having thousands of things on the screen and not making much sense of them, you want to compartmentalize them um, so I just tend to do that, I tend to try to be as neat as possible putting things into layers and stuff, that's just my nature so AI controller maybe can name it anything but that's a perfectly good name if you double click on him you've now got a uh, okay, group set up for this so what you want to do is add a new action you want to look for an actor an actor factory there we go now you want to add a new event which would be to low level there we go so if I just connect load invisible to spawn actor that's fine. And now, of course, you should have that apple selected. So, in there, you should right click and find the new object var, which puts in your little apple. Connect your little apple to the spawn point. That's fine. Now, all you've got to do now, in fact, is just go in here and on the actor factory there's all this details about seek act underscore actor factory which appears in properties it's down here uh, in fact when I did it it was like that and I couldn't see it and I was like well where is this thing and I was like oh yeah <laughs> gotta rescale it so you might find that you need to rescale yours anyway this should be enabled factory needs to be selected a little downwards blue arrow click on that you look for your actor factory AI in fact no don't use that because I think that one doesn't work use UT actor factory AI this definitely works I've had this working earlier you need to go in here if it's not selected there's a little drop down that on next to factory which lets you select a load of hidden options basically now what I've done is I forced the deathmatch AI which is kind of a bit cheaty but it does get the AI to actually navigate and act properly in terms of like they'll come after you and stuff like that leave the controller class as none I believe that seems to be a bug at the moment or maybe a new feature I'm not sure which and in your pawn class you want to select a suitable pawn a good one for this is just the UT pawn it should then ha render a model and not just be completely blank which I've had happen before now I need to give the character a name it doesn't particularly matter for this so I'm going to call mine Fred uh, if you want him to start the link gun which is the default weapon click there 
you can add other stuff which is on this drop down here just hit the plus and then look for the actual item you want I think there's rocket launchers, jump boots quad damage things like that actually not quad damage but but the equivalent in Unreal <laughs> right here we go so I'm just going to tick that for now and I think that's all that you need in there so actually you can just run it as is now all you got to do is rebuild your paths so the AI know what they're doing and where to navigate I think if I press <laughs> yeah there he is now that was a, a bit of a quick example of how to get that working a bit of an advancement to that I'd like to go a bit further get rid of that I'm meant to go into Kismet double click on it now one thing is if you kill that one guy why not have another one spawn another one another one it's just an example really obviously you're going to die eventually if you just keep having multiple enemies spawn but it's just to show you that it can be done and uh, this is a way to go about it so what you want to do is you want a new variable which you can just have as an object empty object you connect that to your spawn or spawned as it says so you want to select new event then you want to select pawn death now what you want to do is connect the out to the spawn actor and you want to connect this instigator to this empty object that you put on spawned so you should have something like that now next what you want to do is go into new actions and you want to look for event and find attached to event if I move it over that side then I can easily connect that finished to the in and then I need to attach the attach E to this empty object again under spawned and the event I need to connect to the top of death and I think that should be everything so if we now ah one more thing if you want to have it spawn indefinitely just go and spawn count hit zero I guess if we wanted only five enemies to spawn we could have five in there but I think no that might be incorrect actually. Um, it's not in there. Set that back to zero. I think. I think there's an option under here to do it. Oh, max trigger count. So if we put that on five, then only five should be spawned. It does prove the principle there. Um, I think there was a navigation error or something and stopped them from actually spawning anymore. Okay, well there's the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and find it useful. See ya.